Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to be revising for your June exam and we're going to be looking at paper 2. So let's start off with multiple choice. A what is a mixture that is uniform where the different components of the mixture cannot be seen. So they want to know what type of mixture, what type of substance is uniform. Okay, it's a mixture, but it's uniform where different components of the mixture cannot be seen. Okay, so let's go through this. We've got heterogeneous, homogeneous, pure substances and a compound. Well, a compound is not a mixture, so we immediately can cross that out. Pure substance is not a mixture. So now we've got heterogeneous and homogeneous. Okay, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Now, hetero means different, and in fact, it means different phases. So we're looking at either a solid and a liquid or a liquid and a gas or a solid and a gas. Whereas homogeneous means all the same phase. So if you read the question again, it says they want a mixture that is uniform where the different components of the mixture cannot be seen. So the correct answer has to be B. So this could be liquid and liquid or gas and gas or even solid and solid, but you can't see the different components. So therefore they're the same phase and we're looking at a homogeneous. Right, moving on. The process whereby solid substance changes to gaseous phase is called what? Okay, so let's think about this. We go from solid to liquid and that is called melting, right? We go from liquid to gas and that is called evaporation. We go from gas to liquid and that is called condensation. From liquid to solid is called freezing. And then if we or solidification, which we prefer. If we go straight from solid to gas, we miss the middle one, which is what they're asking. They're saying the process whereby solid changes to gas. Okay, we miss the middle liquid term. It is called sublimation. So the correct answer is sublimation, which is C. Okay, moving on. It says which one of the following substance is a pure substance. So pure substance is one in which all the particles are the same. In other words, they all have exactly the same things all the way through. Okay. So we know that juice is not a pure substance because juice we know has got obviously some sugar molecules in it and it's got some water molecules in it and it's got all sorts of different types of things. So juice is definitely not. It's salt water. We know for a fact that salt water has got your table salt or whatever salt. Well, it's going to be NaCl anyway, plus water. So therefore, it's not salt water. Steel, if you don't know, is an alloy. And the way you know this is that if you go and look on the periodic table, you will not find steel anywhere. So even though it's a metal that we use in everyday life, it's actually a combination of two other metals. So therefore, that is not a pure substance. So the only one here that's a pure substance is sulfur. And how do we know that? Well, it's pretty easy because it's an element on the periodic table. We find it on the periodic table. So it's an element on the periodic table, therefore we know it is a pure substance. Right, moving on. It says the number of neutrons of 2412 magnesium is. Okay, so what you need to realize is that this number here is the atomic number. And the atomic number is the number of protons which in this case equals 12 and happens to equal the number of electrons if it is a neutral atom. Okay, this here is the atomic mass and that is the number of protons plus neutrons because remember that the neutrons and the protons are the same mass, okay, the same size. So now they want to know what is the number of neutrons. Well, that's pretty easy. This is the number of protons and neutrons, which is 24. This is the number of protons, so we subtract it and we get that 12 equals the number of neutrons. Now, please understand it's not always the same. The protons and the neutrons aren't always equal, just in this case. So therefore, the correct answer is 
D. It says, in which period of the periodic table is carbon found? So in order to answer this question, we actually need to look at our periodic table. Okay, so if we do that, we want to know the period. So periods are basically the rows. The period is a row. And they want to know what row is the periodic table is carbon in. Okay, so unfortunately hydrogen here is covered. I don't know why, but it is. But it's fine because that would be row one here. And this is row two, three, four, etc., etc., or period one, two, three, and four. And they want to know what period is carbon found in, and there's carbon there. So what are they checking here? They're checking your knowledge of periods and compared to groups, and they're checking that you know the symbol for carbon is a big C. Okay, so the period that carbon is found in is in period two. So the answer is B. Next it says the outer electron structure of magnesium ion of the magnesium ion is exactly the same as sodium, neon, argon, or calcium. Okay, so again we need to look at our periodic table. So we're looking at magnesium ion. Here is your magnesium ion. So that's Mg. And your magnesium ion, when it loses electrons, is going to either lose one electron or two electrons, but most likely magnesium becomes magnesium 2 plus, which means it has lost two electrons. So therefore it needs to be the same as what? The reason that magnesium loses two electrons is so that it can become noble. It can have the same electron, out electron structure as a noble gas. So it's not going to stop at sodium, it's going to go all the way back to neon. So therefore the correct answer again is B, which is neon. Now it says which one of the following represents electronic structure of phosphorus? Phosphorus, and again we need our periodic table. We need to find phosphorus here. Okay, so if we look at this, there are a couple ways we can do it. The one is to realize that this here is, these are your s orbitals, and these are your p orbitals. And remember that helium is actually supposed to be sitting over here in the s orbitals. That's helium, yeah. And then you need to think, okay, well, this is group row one or period one. This is period two and period three. So we know that we need to get as far as period three. So all of these get as far as period three. We also know that phosphorus is in a p orbital, the last electron of phosphorus is in p orbital, therefore we can cross out this dude here. Okay, now let's go through it, okay? Do you agree that to get to p, we have to get through these two? So that is 1s, 2, we need to get through these two here, so that is 2s, 2, we need to get through these six here, so that is 2p6. Then we need to get through these two, so that's 3s2. And then we need to get through these three here, so that is 3p and 3. So we want to look at something that ends in a 3. And there's only one that ends in a 3, so therefore the answer is a D. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p3. Excellent. So please know how to use your periodic table to work out your electronic structures. Finally, it says, if 30 grams of reactant A reacts completely with 25 grams of reactant B, which one of the following statements is correct? So let's see, it talks about the total mass of the products plus the unreacted reactants they get it. So they're talking about what? They're talking about the conservation of mass. That's what they're looking at, the conservation of mass. And what does it say? It says that the mass of the reactants has to equal the mass of the products plus any unreacted elements. In other words, basically your mass remains const constant, you conserve it. So now let's see. We've got 30 grams of reactant A and we've got 25 grams of reactant B. So the total mass of all the reactants and products that are left over has to be 55 grams. So let's see what it says. 
the total mass of the products plus any re unreacted reactants will be less than 55 grams. That's wrong. It mustn't be less than, it must be equal to. Then it says, the total mass of the products plus any unreacted reactants will be greater than. Well, how can it be greater than? We started with 55, we can't make more, so therefore that's not right. Then it says the total mass of the products plus any unreacted reactants will be 55 grams. So that looks like the right answer, but let's just read D just to make sure. The total mass of the products will be equal to 55 grams. Well, we're not sure that all, it says that 30 grams of reactant A reacts completely with 25 grams of reactant B, but that just means that A is completely used up. It doesn't mean that B is totally used up. So therefore the correct answer is C. The total mass of products plus any unreacted reactants will be 55 grams. And that grade 10 is a sample of the type of multiple choice questions you can get in the June exam. Please go practice these sections. If you didn't understand what I was talking about, go back to those sections and go and go through the PowerPoints and then go do the questions in the turn.